What you're in TV. These people will kill you if they have to. Was it Black Brian? Is that what this is? Black, what's Black Brian? All right, guys, welcome to the tackle room again. Some people asked, what do I actually carry in the infamous black box? So we're going to move the camera forward and I'm going to kind of go through what I have in this box and how I have it set up. I also move this box between my bay boat and my offshore boat because I also do state water snapper trips on the bay boat when the weather's good. It's a very capable boat and I actually like going in that boat a lot. It's a lot more economical, easier to clean and we just get out there real fast. But I, I don't have a lot of storage in the bay boat as I do in the offshore boat. So the offshore boat has a lot of tackle already in it in their tackle drawers. I'll post them right here, right there, somewhere in this screen and you'll see what I'm talking about. So some heavier tackles already in the offshore boat, but this is kind of like my ready to go tackle box that I move from boat to boat. I already have pre-made rigs and uh, a lot of other tackle in here. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Not sure if I'm in the picture or not, but the first thing I'm gonna start off with is I try to keep a pair of gloves in this box. I have pairs of gloves in the offshore boat, but this is a pair of Bubba gloves. Uh, they're very uh, good for grabbing line, grabbing fish. Uh, they're kind of worn out, but I keep a pair of gloves because I always cut myself. Trolling lures. I definitely have several types of deep divers. Uh, lures that I use for trolling. All of the ones that I have set up are on some sort of cable either pre-made or I made myself. So I'm going to go through some of these trolling plugs real quick. All of these are red for a reason and I'll explain that later but all the ones I'm going to show you real quick that I'm are red because uh, they are a cheap version to an expensive version and I'm trying to make a video on also seeing if a cheaper plug works better than an expensive plug. So I'll go through these real quick. And I'll come back to this one real quick. This plug right here is from Bass Pro Shop, $10. This is a uh, wind cheater plug from Bomber, 10 to 12 bucks. This is a Rapala deep diving plug, 18 to 20 bucks. This is a, another bomber uh, wind cheater plug, 10 to 12 bucks, something like that, eight bucks, I don't remember. And then this is a Williamson Speed, Spur, Williamson Speed Pro 160, somewhere in the 18 to 20 dollar range, maybe even more. Uh, this is probably my favorite plug to pull. I have all these on wire because all of these are used for uh, trying to catch kingfish. Do I have other colors? Yes, but I'm trying to keep the test using all reds. That's why I have a lot of reds in this box right now. Okay, leader material. I keep two kinds of little mat leader material. This is just basic mono leader material right here from Andes. It's a 50 yard and it's also 50 pounds. I don't use anything too much heavier than that in the box. Now I do have a lot of pre-made stuff that I do make with crimps, uh, but that's already 100 to 150 depending on uh, how big of a line I want to use. We have some fluorocarbon leader. This is 40 pounds. This is kind of what I tie to my slow pitch uh, gear. Uh, that's just basically to help try to save a lure or two. Not not that keen on using uh, the floral, but I do use it for that. Okay, some of you have kept up with me. I, I am a big fan of Simrad. Um, most of uh, all my points and everything are in my Simrad, but I do keep a binder in here. Uh, this binder uh, has all kinds of points uh, that I've used, uh, and I'm talking about GPS points that I've created or my neighbor gave me, or I've just moved to a book. I also keep some cheap notes on my Simrad just in case I need to uh, make some corrections or something or change a value and I forgot how to do it. I have a 
cheat sheet, so I always carry a binder in here. Uh, sometimes I take even this box with me with, on somebody else's boat, and they might want to try a different point, so I might have a written down point type point that we can put into their GPS. On top of that, I always carry uh, the offshore map for, uh, for my area, and if we need to reference it, we might reference it the night before, or like I said, if I'm on somebody else's boat and they don't have a point, or they want to look at something more on a bigger platform, we can always break out the map. All right, guys, I got my protein shake here. Okay, I'm bullshitting. This is just a jug that I have my weights in here. Ninety percent of the weights I use are going to be egg stinkers. This is maybe four, six ounces. I don't have my glasses on. This looks like it's just six ounces. But usually I'm going to use fours, sixes, and eights, um, maybe twelves. Anything heavier than that, I actually have in the offshore boat. Uh, but like I said, this is weights that I move from boat to boat. So when I'm not doing an offshore trip on the bay boat, I don't have all this extra weights and stuff. So this is what I use, and I'm going to show you the rigs that I create in a few minutes. In the same token, I also have hooks thrown in that protein jug. Uh, these are Gamagatsu's uh, circle hooks. You're, you have to use circle hooks in state waters. These are octopus circle hooks, and they look like seven knots. This is what they look like right here. So, I pre-make all my rigs the night before or they're just made in the box. So, I keep them maybe one, two, three in a Ziploc baggie with different weight sizes. Uh, but usually they all have the same hooks. Here's some more. And I have all the weights hooked up to them. This one's on a single. We'll take this one out real quick. Got a swivel, a sprose. This is the setup. Some people call this a Carolina rig. Some people call it a knocker rig. Some people call it a fish finder rig. Um, not 100% sure what you call this rig. I do know that sometimes if you have the weight up here, that's more of a fish finder rig. This is a Carolina rig. I could be confused. Comment if you think I'm wrong. But this is what I use right here. Another thing too about having them pre-made, uh, you will get broken off a lot by sharks. And it's, I don't have time to be making rigs out there, especially if I have guests on the boat that don't want to be waiting for you to build a rig. That's when you could get seasick from doing fine motor skills, tie, trying to tie the line. But we have a lot more in here. And I'm gonna to continue to move these out just so we can keep on going and showing you what's in the box. All right, we'll move on to the next item. Okay, I'm gonna move through the box a little bit faster. This is a fish cushion, or it's from Cush It. Don't remember the size of this. Might be all game size, but it fits the TFO rods pretty well. I keep one of these. Um, some people like to have a cushion on when they're really in fish, so I'll keep one of these in the box to move around if need be. A pair of fish grips, just in case somebody wants to grab a fish and hold it up and they don't want to get their hands cut up by the gill plates. I always carry a knife to fillet fish afterwards. I'm partial to this Bubba knife. Use whatever knife you want. Uh, all knives are good if you sharpen them. All knives suck if you don't sharpen them. I really can't stand to see promotions for knives. They're all good if you sharpen them. Keep a scale on here. Somebody might want to weigh a fish that they think they Broke a record, we'll scale it up. I carry bigger hooks. Uh, these are mustads. These are a lot bigger uh, hooks than the circle hooks that I have on there. These might be uh, 
I can't see. Maybe it looks like it's just 14 knots. This is a lot bigger circle hook. This is more of I'm gonna try to go after something a lot. Uh, and when I say bigger, I mean the gauge wire on it's a lot thicker, so it should withstand. Wipies. And then there's always gotta be somebody that'll ask for some type of custom fillet on a fish. So a descaler. And uh, now we'll show you what's in the blue box and we'll continue from there. All right, blue box. I carry some other more lures really is it what's gonna be inside the blue box, inside the black box. But this might be a set of small little metal lures that I use for catching jackfish and bait fish, blue runners, things like that. More mono for leaders or leader material. Uh, more lures, hey a blue one, not a red one. On a cable, most everything we fish for is toothy down here. Uh, Pre-made uh, wire leaders. That's a bomber. A bomber. A spoon. This is like a seven dollar lure. Trolls really good. These you can buy at Academy for seven, eight bucks on a wire leader. Still got some in the box. An X wrap by Rapala. It's a good le uh, lure. Works great. might carry a few mahi lures just in case but we usually don't go far out enough for mahi so I really don't worry about these uh, but they're in here just because they're little crimpers and I'll show you the other crimpers that I use for crimping uh, sleeves I'll have a big assortment of sabikis in here. We have all kinds of sabikis. Like I said, all kinds of sabikis. And uh, one more mahi lure. All right, we're coming to the end. I'm here at the bottom almost. So I've got a Ziploc baggie. I've got more wire material in this Ziploc baggie uh, to make wire leaders. This is uh, American Fishing Warehouse brand, I believe. And uh, it's called Camel. I, mean, I don't have my glasses on, but this is a uh, braided wire. I have more braided wire over here. I've got the crimps, just in case we need to build new uh, leaders. We're almost at the end, guys. Believe it or not, a little bit of sandpaper just in case I need to put an edge on a hook that might feel a little not as sharp. Got a leader box, I'm sorry, a tackle box with more lures of some sort. Now, here's a problem with a lot of lures that sit at the bottom. This is a bomber and the hooks are all rusty on it. So the question people ask is, why don't you leave a lot of this tackle on your boat? A lot of tackle that stays in your boat, you know, some people say, oh, my boat has a lot of storage. That's nice and all, but basically all those lures and hooks get messed up sitting on the boat every day out in the elements. These don't sit out on the boat and they get messed up. Got top waters smaller trolling plugs more trolling plugs more trolling plugs some type of poppers more trolling plugs and just like everything the treble hooks get all caught up with each other but this is not really my go-to or if I'm doing this this is because I'm doing it for fun so I'm not in a hurry So 
that about wraps up what's inside the tackle box that I move around from boat to boat. Got a quick fish chart. It's always good to have some type of saltwater fishing chart. I don't really use this anymore. I have uh, the fish fishing rules. It's a great app. I recommend everybody grab one of those. I'll put a link to fish rules just in case you don't have it. Uh, there's a federal section and a state section, so just when you're going through it, make sure you're in either, if you're in federal waters, look at the federal requirements. If you're in state waters, look at the state requirements. Outside of that, uh, I'll move to one last thing, but that's about it. So give me a few seconds and we'll get to that next part. Alright, the last bit of tackle that I move from boat to boat is split ring pliers for uh, putting on slow pitch jigs. Obviously, a pair of Spros that are in here. I got all sizes of jigs in here from uh, 80 grams up to 3 or 400 grams. And I have three boxes with jigs in them. I also, um, and we got extremely large jigs. Moderate size jigs to bucktail jigs, and I have various sizes in these boxes that I move along with this black box. And the last thing that I also move along, I have to show you all, is and this is a good set of crimpers. This is a I think Cuda brand uh, crimpers and. I'll make liters out of this uh, with aluminum double barrel sleeves on 150 to 200 pound mono. Uh, but that's about it. That's what's in the black box and this gets moved from boat to boat. Basically what I'm trying to do is prevent all this tackle from getting messed up uh, sitting on the boat. Uh, it usually stays in the tackle room and when I know what boat I'm going to use I just throw it on there. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions or comments. Uh, Knock it out and I'll try to answer your questions or comments. Thanks a lot.